get prepared for some more cuddle sewing this morning. <laughs> you gotta keep a lip roller handy, I tell ya. Okay. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. We're back. Sew together Tuesday. I have a, another one of these that I just finished. So I'm gonna turn this inside out while we're waiting for people to come. And then we'll talk about what we're making because it's another one of these guys. Which at this point, I have a whole family's worth. Good morning. Good morning. So together Tuesday. It looks like we're at the end of the show already, but really we're just finishing up another sample. <laughs> Good morning. Glad you guys are here. We are back for another episode of Sew Together Tuesday. I'm Teresa Coates. I am the National Educator for Shannon Fabrics, and today we are making little stockings. Ta-da! Super cute, right? Hey, I'm going to hang this up with the... Uh, the others take this one down because this is the one I didn't like <laughs> so I'll hide that one <laughs> so now we've got got a few of them so I made a whole variety of them this week and we'll talk about the different variations why I did them the way that I did and all of that good stuff so um so welcome so together Tuesday it's December so we are full on in the Christmas mode and we are making stockings today because they are um, kind of like something you need a little early. They're cute when you they hang for a while. And so today we partnered with um, we partnered with the folks at AccuQuilt, and so we're going to be using an AccuQuilt die for our stocking. A lot of the things that we're going to talk about today, um, you'll be able to use with any other pattern, any other stocking pattern that you have. But the die just makes it super fast and easy. So, again, welcome. I'm Teresa Coates. I'm here with Hawk. Give him a thumbs up. And uh, <laughs> he's here with me doing the camera work again. And we are really happy that you are joining us. So thanks so much for coming. Um, before we get too far into it, I want to remind you to share the video, share it with your um, your friends, your sewing friends, your sewing groups, um, and you'll be entered to win a kit at the end of the show. We will send out um, one of our strip quilt kits to you. And so make sure to do all the sharing. And then also, today is Giving Tuesday. So if you're not familiar with that, Giving Tuesday is like a special national day where they're definitely fundraising so it kind of comes after like Black Friday, Cyber Monday, and then Giving Tuesday. Um, and we are still raising funds to take care of the, um, the making the world a softer place like a fundraiser. I'm gonna mess up the words again. A food drive? Um, food drive is basically what we're doing. So we're trying to raise funds to pay for these meals. So the, the meals have been paid for and then we're just trying to um, fund it and so you can give to that there is a way that like when you go to the page and they'll put up the landing page in the comments there. And if you go to that page, the easy thing to do is just click the thing where you pay $40 or you donate $40. Uh, but you can actually donate any amount. So you can put in whatever you would like that you can afford to donate and you can do that really easily. So um, are we having trouble with this again? Goodness. Right again. Okay, go. we're gonna keep doing it. Um, yeah, the mic is not off. So hopefully we can get some get some stuff going here. So let us know. I plugged it and plugged it back in again. We'll see what happens. Okay. Yeah, exactly. So I just got a text. How are we doing? It says your mic is off. So let me know if you can hear us. Okay. If you can hear me well. Um, and if not, we'll try to, to plug, replug, do all that good stuff. Do I need to plug back here? Are we getting thumbs up? Uh, let me know if you can hear me because yeah, it's not much fun. Let's see. Oh, it's great now, she says. Okay. Great. Okay. We're good. All right. Thanks. I don't know. We'd like to do this every time we have to unplug, replug, and it seems to not want to catch at first, and I'm not sure why. So Apparently, we now have to wait till we are actually live before I plug in the microphone. Got it. Okay. So, yep. you know, <laughs> that's what happens. Technology just keeps changing on us. So we'll keep doing it. So thank you for letting us know. If you ever have problems like that, if the mic is are not working, please do let us know. I appreciate it. Um, because otherwise, I just sit here talking. I have no idea that it's not working. Um, so anyway, thanks for joining us. Donate if you can. Um, and today, we're going to make stockings. So uh, if there aren't any questions, let's get to it. Not yet. All right. So if you have any questions at all, please um, just comment them. And uh, Hawk will share them with me. Or Ellen will share them with me with text. I'm here with him here in the studio. And then Ellen and Michael are... Um, coming in from afar to help out with the show. So thanks so much for being here. Um, I think that's it. Okay, so today we're working with the AccuQuilt die. That's how we're gonna make this stocking. Like I said, it varies. You could use your own pattern if you want to, but we're gonna use the, um, the die. I have got the big 
go big one. Um, and this is the fun one. So they have a few different variations. I have the, the little bitty guy back here. Can you show that, Hawk? Which is the go baby. Okay, and that's a little crank one. I have the middle size too, and it's downstairs because I really like my dies. Um, and it's a crank one, but I figured I would use this one because this is a long die, and this is the electric one. So if you haven't seen this one work, it's super great. And I think it's, um, I use it actually for two reasons. One, because it's easier and it's the bigger die, but also I have issues with my shoulder, and I was like, that crank thing will probably not be good for me. So <laughs> you've seen the electric one today for that. So if you have issues with um, joint pain or anything like that, the electric ones are really nice because they just run right through. So we'll do that. Um, okay, so let's talk about the dies. The die that I'm using today is this guy, which is a nice big one. Okay, this is the stocking die from AccuQuilt, and it comes with the body and the cuff. We're going to do it a little bit differently because that's the way I like to roll. So we're going to do the body of the stocking with the die, and then we're actually going to do the, um, the cuff separately. So we'll talk about that in a little bit, but that's what we're going to do is run that through. The thing that you need is you need the die, and as we found out, <laughs> we also need a mat that fits. So... Um, so thanks to AccuQuilt and to a shop in Glendora called The So-and-So, which I taught at a couple of years ago, and I called her, and I was like, hey, can you help me out? And she did. So I have a, a mat for us. You need mats to fit all of them. Let's see if I can get this out. It's kind of stuck in there. Um, but the mats vary by um, different die size. So I think there are, I don't know, four or five different die sizes. Um, and so they, each one needs its own size. Okay, this is a perfect pristine one. You can see how beautiful it is. Okay, as soon as we run this through, it's going to have lines in it. So, you know, enjoy it while it's here. Um, <laughs> once you use it, they do get kind of, um, they kind of get weird. Um, and that's normal. Okay, so if your, die, if your mat looks like this, your die cutting mat looks like this, this is totally normal. All right, they're just going to look like that. They can actually take quite a bit of this before they're going to have to be replaced. At some point, you will have to replace it um, if you use your die a lot. Okay, uh, I have one that I've done a winding ways, and I love that, um, that quilt block, and I have made it a lot of times. And I've actually gone through a couple of mats with that one. So you do have to replace them sometimes, but these mats are important. These little guys we used, these are the gingerbread cookie ones. So we used all these dies, okay? So this is the cute little gingerbread and the clothes, and that made these. Super cute, right? Mm -hmm. Adorable. But it makes these sort of things super easy. So I really love the dies because you can do things that would otherwise be um, tedious to cut those little pieces out. But instead I just like, done. Super fast and easy, okay? So the dies, easy to use, and um, yeah, just make it so much faster. So let's do it. So we often get asked when we're talking about the dies, can you use them with cuddle? Yes, you can. Um, and how much can you cut? I don't like to do more than two layers at a time because it's, um, it can be slippery and it'll kind of move on you. So we don't wanna, um, we don't wanna do too much. So I have to tell you, <laughs> to show you this. So this is the, the big one, right? This is the handle that you pick it up with. And if you see the top, you can see the split in it. And I can't tell you how many times I have tried to figure out how to split this, how to pop this off and open it up here. It doesn't. It opens up over here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's often been um, far enough in between uses that I spend, you know, 15 minutes trying to figure out how do I open this thing? Uh, this is how you open it, just like that, okay? Then it lays down and it's gonna slide right through here. So I've got my die and I've got my mat and I've got my fabric, okay? Um, and I'm gonna use batting in mine today. So I'm gonna lay this down together. So let's cut these out and then I will talk to you about why I chose the batting. So what it needs to do is go over the die so I can see on here where it's going to cut. I just want to make sure that that whole area is covered. Okay, And I only have a slight piece of this so we're going to hope really hard that I get it all in there. Okay, It was just big enough but I didn't want to fussy cut it and I really want to use it. So we're going to do that. So I've laid it on here 
I can see this. I've put this up. If I'm going to put this against my blades, which is what's in here, so the way these work is there's a blade inside here that will actually get, this fabric will get pushed against and then it will cut it. Okay, so if I'm going to put the fabric against here, I will put the cuddle side up and put the backing against the blade. So when it pushes up, it pushes the nap upward and instead of into the blade. Okay, so then I'm going to put this on here. I want to see if this will work. Okay, it's worked a hundred times before, so let's see if it, well, not a hundred, but four, at least four times this week it's worked. Okay, all right, so let me get this turned on. I'm going to get the little green light. And then we're just going to feed it through. It's just going to work itself through. Cut everything. Fingers crossed. <laughs> and pop it out the other side. Ta-da! Okay. That should have done it. Let's see. Okay. Oh, look at that. Ta-da. Okay, so it pops it right out. I put the batting against this so that when it cut the batting, or it cut, it cut the batting first because the batting would be less messy. Okay, so now I just have my little scraps and I can throw them away. And now my pieces are all cut. Okay, I already cut the lining piece before, but you could absolutely cut all of them at the same time. Uh, and then you can do all six layers at once and have it all cut out. Okay. That's the joy of using the die is that all of a sudden it's just all cut out. You can also use it, like I said, for the cuff. And if you do it for that, then everything is cut. So we still have to cut the cuff because we're going to do it a little differently. All right. So the other thing to remember too, is when you're using that die, I've used this, like I said, I used it, what, four I've made four of them, one, two, five now, five. And if you look at this really close, you can come in and you can see, I don't really have much mess in here. You can see a few little places where there's some fibers stuck in here, okay? That, you'll wanna clean it out every few uses. So don't let this get too packed up in here because what will happen is that um, that will ca start causing issues and it won't cut as well. So make sure you clean it. You can get a little, um, it's almost like a little pick and I think that they, I think it might come with the machine originally. I have a couple of them and you can just pick out those fibers when they get in there. Okay. But don't forget to do that because it's important to keep your blades working well. Um, the other thing is it comes with instructions on how to use it with the length wise of the grain with cotton and make sure that you pay attention to that. With the cuddle, it's a little bit less important because it's a knit, um, but do pay attention because they, they give you some good advice. Those, uh, those AccuCult folks. Okay. Other, other than picking out um, the, the cuddle dust, is there any other cleaning that needs to happen? No, no, it's totally, it's totally fine. And the cuddle, like you could see, like I cut five of them out of cuddle with that and that's as much mess as I have. And I haven't, I didn't clean it after any of them. That's just, that's where it's at. So it generally, like, it won't really cause a big problem. The biggest problem is when people put the, especially if you use a longer nap one, like if you use a hide or something like that, and you put that against the blade, and then, because what happens is it pushes down the foam, cuts the stuff, and then it comes back. And if you push down the foam and push the little hide bits in there, that nap, it'll stay in there. Um, so I've had more problem if I've tried to cut lux, but you'll definitely have more problem if you put it against the blade. So put it backing against the blade if you're gonna cut just cuddle. Okay, um, this is a great way if you have a favorite quilt pattern that you like to use and you have the die, you could do that thing that we've done before where you use the SF-101, the Pellon, and iron it to the back and then you cut it with the die and then you can make any quilt out of cuddle. It's kind of amazing. So um, I just saw something come through from Ellen. Let me see. Is there a pattern if you don't have an AccuQuilt cutter? There are a million stocking patterns. There are a ton of them. So um, yeah, you can find a stocking pattern. There are... Um, yeah, a lot of them online. We don't have one up yet, but you know, if you email me, I might be able to send you the, the draft that I have. Okay. Um, all right, so I've got all of my pieces. I was gonna talk to you about the inside. So on this one, I used the, I used the batting. That's the one we're gonna make. And that's because that's the one I like the best. So I did four variations because I like to try everything, as Hawk knows. And I'm like, maybe I should try. <laughs> maybe I should do that. Like, I always have another variation I want to try. So this was the first one that I did. And um, this one I did without anything in it. 
okay and somebody had posted on our I love cuddle group which you aren't if you aren't a part of yet you should definitely join it's a Facebook group and we all talk about sewing with cuddle and this one I did without anything in it and somebody had posted on there that they like found theirs to be really floppy and that's exactly what it is this is just really sort of lifeless um, and then I also accidentally put the, I forgot to put the hole in the lining and I decided I would put it in the cuff and see how that worked and it didn't. So don't do that. Um, this is all, like the first one is always my like, what if I do this? And then I realize like, no, that doesn't, that's not a good idea. Um, <laughs> so that's what this was. This is the Sherpa. The Sherpa is great for the cuff. I think it's super cute. Okay. Um, this one has seen, seen better days because it needs to be fluffed off. Um, yeah, it needs the lint roller. Where is it? See if I can lint roller it, make it look a little nicer for you guys here. No, it's, I got the blue stuck in there pretty good. Um, that's what happens when it floats around. So this is cute and it looks great like sitting down here, but hanging, it sort of just loses its oomph. Okay. So I decided I didn't want to do it like that. I do like the Sherpa as a cuff. I think it's super cute. This one I cut separately. Okay. This one I did mostly like the pattern tells you to do. Um, <laughs> this one I used the um, die to cut the stocking cuff. Okay, so when you cut the cuff, you actually cut four pieces and then you sew them together. So here's a seam and here's a seam and then here's a seam that goes all the way around. Okay, so this way you can do it and you can just flip this out and you can make this cuff whatever size you want to. So you could have, like this has like a decent amount of cuff before it hits the lining. Oh, and I used our silky satin for the lining, which I think looks really nice. So that's what both of these are. Same mm -hmm. So both of these are our silky satin, which is a polyester satin. Um, it's really nice to work with. So that's what I did here. So this is with just the Cuddle 3 as the cuff, which I think turns out nice. I just realized that I didn't necessarily want that seam right here. So I thought I'm just going to cut it out separately. So I did. <laughs> um, oh, and then this one I used the SF-101 in. So this one, I backed it in SF-101, so you can see it has a little bit more body than this one. Oops, there we go. So you can see this one has a little bit more body, um, but it still, it wasn't quite, wasn't quite right. So I kept trying, okay. Um, so then I did this one, okay, and this one I used a um, Pelon 30, I think it was. It's a sew, sew in stabilizer. And I use this um, in here and it makes it a little bit, I want to say stiffer. It's, yeah, it's like not as, not as nice stiff as the batting does. So this is like stiffer and the, the batting will give it more body. So this worked um, fine. Would use again, but um, it's not my favorite. So that's why we're using the batting. But this one I did the little, um, those little, appliques with the little gingerbread and they turned out super cute uh, these I can you come come show these and I'll talk about just really quick on this so what I did first was I cut out the shape of the stocking and then I put my appliques on one layer at a time without the um, without any lining or anything but I did do it with the stabilizer behind it so when I applique this this has stabilizer behind it to make it have a little bit more body and then these I used teeny tiny little beads are what the eyeballs are okay brand doesn't matter because I just got them off of you know Amazon or something but just little bitty beads or buttons will work for those eyeballs okay super cute though and like really quite adorable and this is just a blanket stitch you can see if I had to do it again I would probably make this blanket stitch a little bit smaller I think it's a two and a half millimeter wide and I would probably just do like a one and a half because I don't love the way that it sticks into the fabric, but it was really easy to do. Super duper easy. I stuck them on with um, the 505 spray and then just stitched around them and finished the, finished the stocking. So this one has, like, yeah, this one has the, the Pellon interfacing and then this one has seal for the cuff, which is what we're gonna do today. Okay, and we'll talk more about that. And then this one, has the batting in it and a faux fur cuff okay and this one like the seal is actually just one layer so this one I only do one layer of it and just flip it over so because this is a faux fur so remember this is, a, this is different than a luxe cuddle so the faux fur is not washable all right but what that does is it has this little edge that comes over so even though this is just a raw edge right here 
because it has this huge nap to it here, and this faux fur just hangs off, then I can just flip it over and it totally hides in there. Okay. I like that one a lot. I think that's super pretty. And that one also has the silky satin inside. Okay, and this one has the batting. So if I hang these all up here, let me do that again. You can see the difference in how they hang. So this one is very nice and stiff. This one is a little drapier, floppier, and this one has some nice body to it. All right, so this is the batting, and that's the one I, um, I would recommend is to use the batting. So that's what we're going to do today, okay? So that was a lot, of, a lot of information about the insides, but I wanted you to know because honestly, like, that's what I do is I, uh, you know, I try things out and see how it works. Okay. All right. So I've got my pieces. Oh, so let me get my pieces here and then I want to cut my cuff. Okay. So in the pattern, if you do it like the pattern, you're going to cut it at 14 and a half by four and a half inches uh, to make your one piece cuff. I don't like it that long, so I cut it actually shorter. So this, the, um, the faux one here, the faux fur one, is actually three and a half inches, and that's what we're gonna do, because I like that a little bit better. This is longer, this is the, um, and this one actually, I cut it off, I think, to four inches, um, and made it a little bit shorter. I just like it a little bit shorter. So really, like, all of these things are so variable as to what you wanna do. This is what we're gonna do today. All right, so I've got my seal, which is this crazy fluffy stuff. Um, super fun. Okay. It has a nap. You can see if I, let me see, I'll show you the selvage side. So here's the selvage. The nap is always going to run along the selvage. So I can pet it this way or I can pet it this way. And I see that this way stands up more. So this is the selvage or this is the, the nap running this direction. Okay. So if I do it this way, you can see it stands up this way. It lays down nice. That means my nap is going that direction. So I'm going to cut it off at the bottom. It's clearly just a scrap piece. It's got all sorts of things cut out of it already. I'm going to use my ruler and I'm going to get my black pen and I'm going to do three and a half because that's what I like. So I'm going to cut it at that and then 14 and a half. So on my ruler I've got a 14 and a half line. Okay. And I'm going to back this thing up because I've already got sort of a line cut over there drawn. Okay, so I'm going to stop it over here short of my selvage because I do want to cut the selvage off on this. Mostly because it just looks different and I don't, I, don't, I don't want it on there for this one. So I'm going to just draw my lines. Of course, that's where my, my ruler is broken. Look at that, guys. <laughs> Bake it. Not, I know, I'm just going to try. It'll be fine. Okay, I'll draw my little lines here because that's where I need to, um, that's where I'll need to cut it. So I'm just going to draw right along here and then right up here. Okay. All right. So there, oops, let me draw that last line. Connect those and make sure it's straight by lining this up on a, an inch line on the ruler. Make sure that it's nice and square and then I can cut that. So this, because it's a long, Lux Cuddle. I'm going to cut it with my blade that I like so much. Okay, so this is the little Ulfa blade. Oh, it's on my last one. I might have to replace it. Um, so this is the Ulfa SAC-1. It's the one I like the best. Okay, it's a great little blade for cutting things like this. So um, if it's sharp, we'll, <laughs> it'll show you how well it cuts. And if not, we'll change the blade. Okay. Oh, it. Let me see if I can. This one is sharper because you know I have two. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so I'm just going to draw right along that line. I'm going to do the same thing here. Seal is also one. I'll do the next line with my scissors and show you how I do it with the little scissors. Okay, and I'm just going to cut right along those little lines that I made, all right? And I can separate it. And if I were to cut this with a rotary cutter, all of these little fibers that are in here that I'm pulling apart, all of these would just be floating around my sewing room. So using it with the blade, you can see it doesn't really fall off, which is kind of the best thing ever. So I'm gonna cut this end one here. 
Okay, and then I'll show you with my little scissors. So any sort of little micro serrated scissors, these are my Fomores. Um, Kai and uh, Karen K. Buckley make some good ones as well. Okay, and I'm just gonna take tiny stitches. So whenever I tell people when we're doing classes, I tell them to take teeny tiny little stitches. This is what I mean is teeny tiny little stitch, or not stitches, clips. Okay, it's just teeny tiny. And as soon as I can start it feeling like building up under the scissors, then I'll take it out put it right back underneath just the edge of it, okay? Because all I'm doing is cutting the backing. I don't want to cut the front of it. So this is a very thick, very plush fabric, and I don't want to cut all of this. One, because it's messy, but two, it'll give it a haircut that I don't want. I want that nap to stay intact so it'll kind of fall over the bottom because I'm not going to hem this. We're just going to let it hang out the bottom, okay? Are there any questions for us there? They're doing all right. So far. Okay. Hey, if you have any questions, shoot them out. Otherwise, I'm just going to keep doing my thing. Okay. All right. So I got that nice and neat. Now I've got my piece. Okay. So you can see, look at that. Look at that huge mess we made. Wow. <laughs> There's hardly any mess at all today. That was great. Okay. Hardly anything at all. I am going to take my vacuum just to the edge because what happens is some of the, some of the fibers will have stuck to it. So I'm just going to um, vacuum just the edge of it really quick. <laughs> making process between when you would choose to use the Ulfa blade and the scissors? Like, um, why would you choose one or the other since they seem to do the same work? Yeah, the scissors I generally will use on curves. So the blade I'll use on straight lines. It's really easy on straight lines and I just hold it and I can drag it and it's really easy. So the scissors are better when I'm doing a curve. So the scissors you could use if you don't have a blade, but if you have a blade, the straight lines totally, I just use the blade on all the time. The scissors are good if you're cutting um, if you're cutting something that has a shape to it and you need a little bit more precision. The scissors will give you really good precision. Got it. Um, okay, that was the question she just passed on to. <laughs> um, all right, so now I've got my little seal all done out. So you can see the way that this comes over here. I can't see that backing fabric because it's long enough that it just flops over. So I'm not going to care that there isn't two sides to this okay so we're just going to leave it like this and we're going to sew it so now we've got the cuff i've got my lining okay those go so nicely together and i've got my outside fabric and my batting all right i also have somewhere <laughs> um because this always happens i have a little piece of uh ribbon i have a six inch piece of ribbon somewhere yeah maybe this is it I think so. Look at that. So it'll go with the blue in the fabric. Okay. All right. So this, I was going to show you this really quick. This is the, this is the SF 101. Okay. That we like to use. If you were to make, if you were to use the dies to make a quilt, I would totally recommend that you iron this onto the back of the fabric, cut it with your dies and make yourself a quilt. Totally great. Will work wonderfully at making it work like a quilting cotton or more like a quilting cotton. This is the interfacing that I use or the stabilizer. You can see it's pretty stiff. Um, and I thought it would maybe hold the stocking nicer. I was wrong. I didn't particularly prefer it, but I just wanted you to see what it was that I was dealing with. Okay. So I'm going to put those to the side. Okay. Now let me move things around. So I'm going to put this on the ground so I can get this off the table. Okay, move my things out of the way just a little bit. All right, and then we'll move my machine back in place. We had to do a little finagling <laughs> to get everything to be where we want it to be. Okay. All right, so I move my dies. I'm gonna put those over here them back together in a bit. All right, so now we're gonna sew the stocking together. Okay, so we're gonna sew the lining piece, and then we're gonna sew the outside piece, and then we're gonna sew them all together. Um, 
The one thing I did try yesterday and I just didn't have enough time to get finished, it would be super cute. If you have a long arm or a mid arm that you really like quilting on, I think it'd be beautiful to quilt a hunk of the cuddle and then cut it out with the dies and make the stocking out of it. You could make some really pretty stockings. So looking forward to see what you guys do with that because I think that would be lovely. Um, we're just gonna stick these two together and we're actually gonna just sew them all together at the same time. So, I'm gonna put these in the right order. Okay, so we wanna stick these two together. And you could probably, I didn't try it, but I bet that you could spray base these together and then cut them so that they were just perfectly matched. Um, instead of working on it, oh, I just got a teeny tiny bit right there that cut off the toe. Oops. Seam allowance. Yep, Fine. that's exactly, it's in the seam allowance. It's totally okay. We're just gonna leave it. That's what we do. Okay, I'm gonna put this one on top of it. Do a little scratchy, scratchy bit to get the fabric to go where I want it to. Okay, and I'm gonna lay all of these layers together. So I've got my two pieces of fabric and my two pieces of batting stuck together. I'm gonna sew this a little bit more than three, at a quarter of an inch. In the pattern it says a quarter of an inch and I'm probably just gonna take a little bit more as I come around here so I can make sure and catch that. But I'm gonna put this on top so that I can see, make sure that I catch it. All right, and I'm gonna pin this and wonder clip it. All right, because I am dealing with the four layers together and my um, pieces are not gonna move quite as much, I'm gonna pin it perpendicular to the edge. If you are struggling a little bit and feeling like it's not staying in place, you can always do the parallel pinning where you would pin it like this all the way around, okay? So we're gonna pin it this direction and see what happens. Because that's <laughs> apparently how I sew a lot of times. So let me try this and see what happens. <clears throat> and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't, you know. But I always figure out something. I think I've seen you use the, the perpendicular pinning more on curves mm -hmm. and the parallel pinning more on straight runs. Straight lines. Yep, exactly. Okay. So yep. There's, yep. There's and the longer, about it. yep. So definitely the curves, it's just easier because I can get more, um, more pins in here. And then we have that thing where if you, especially if you're using a Lux cuddle, because you could use a Lux cuddle for the body. And if you are, these curves need to be held really tight. So I would pin one side and then I would come back and pin this side especially with the Lux Cuddle. So if you are new to sewing cuddle, this is a great way to tackle your curves so that they're easier to it, sew. It kind of does a wave. It does. It does kind of do a little bit of a wave. They cancel each other out. They do. Mm -hmm. it. And it will work totally fine. What happens otherwise is you end up getting um, parts that will move. So if I, don't, if I don't pin these together, and especially on the Lux, then these would slide apart. So it's just giving you one more place that's gonna be held nice and tight. All right. So I'm gonna do that again. I'll do that again on the other side over here. Oops. On the heel curve as well. Okay, and we just wanna make sure that those are pretty well matching. The pattern does call for a quarter of an inch and I'm going to mostly do a quarter of an inch. Uh, kind of a heavy one. Just to make sure I catch everything really nicely. This would definitely be one that you're going to want to go back and check. Make sure you caught everything before you do your final sew together. Okay. All right. So now I've got that whole thing sewn or pinned together, and then we can sew it. So let's do that, and then we'll do the uh, stocking cut or the stocking lining after that. All right, so you ready to come around? Yep. All right. So we'll get this on. Oh, sorry. There we go. Moved things around so we could get things in the right places. All right. So I've got it on. Oh, I've got it on my calendar for some reason. Uh, I've got it on a straight stitch. I am going to bump it up just to a three. And we're going to see how that works. If you need to bump it up to a three and a half, totally fine. You want it to move through your machine easily. So if you are struggling, if it's three and a half and your machine is struggling with it, just pop it up a little bit. Okay, take that um, stitch length up. The other thing is to reduce your presser foot pressure. Okay, so I've got this underneath my 
Underneath the foot, I'll take that first pin out and I'm going to do a little lock stitch. Okay, and then I'm just going to sew all the way around. I'm going to take my pins out before I get there. If I start to notice, I can see this is bubbling just the tiniest little bit here. Okay, because I've got all these layers. I'm just going to hold it down with my stiletto and make it feed underneath the foot a little more. All right, so the thing with the stiletto is so great. Why I talk about it all the time is because I really can control the fabric much easier than if I have my fingers up there. Okay, so these curves, we're going to want to take them nice and slow. What happens when you're doing curves, so it's kind of, you can't really see too much here, but a lot of times what happens with curves is your seam allowance will get extra wide because as this is coming in, you're pushing it over here and then your seam allowance is coming way over. So as you're coming through, just keep an eye on the seam allowance line here and try to keep it fairly even. It will get, almost always get bigger at the corners though, at those rounds. So be patient with yourself. Okay, I'm going to take it nice and slow, and if you need to stop and reposition, you absolutely can. I'm just going to take the pins out before we get there. I can see this is my little place where I got a little bit short. So I'm just going to slide my seam allowance in just a little, make sure I catch that. And then I'll come back around to a quarter of an inch. Okay, so now I can make sure that I caught that. I'll look at it. After we're finished here, make sure that I got it. And then use my little stiletto to get us to go around the corner. As fairly evenly as possible. And like I said, if you really need to slow it down, please do. Okay, the slower you go, the less likely you are to have it bunch up on you too. What happens is if you go too fast, it just starts shoving it forward. So take your time. Okay, I'm gonna let this come forward just a little bit so that it will match up a little bit better at the end. Okay, so I'm gonna get over here, do a little back stitch, cut my thread. All right. So now we've got it sewn all the way around. So what I want to do is I want to check here and I can scan barely see this is my this is my second edge down here. So it barely caught it. So I'm going to come back over here one more time. You can see kind of from this side it barely caught it. Because this is the toe and I wanted to make sure and catch, I'm going to come back over and sew just a little bit, a little bit more. All right, I want to make sure that that's caught. I don't want to, I don't want to shove anything into the toe and have that come out or, you know, just as I'm rounding the seam later. Okay, so I'm going to start back here, kind of go over the same line that I did before and then just take it in just the tiniest little bit and then back to where I was. Okay, so what that did is it gave me just the tiniest little 16th of an inch more and of course I'm going to leave that there because nobody wants to unpick that also it just makes it a little stronger so that's totally great all right okay so let's put that to the side and then we're going to sew this one so this one you can stay over here because we're going to sew again pretty quick um <laughs> stay close um so this is the, the silky satin okay really beautiful it's a really nice satin if you have worked with satins very much you know that they tend to fray so this is one like it will fray i cut this a couple of days ago and it sort of sat in my studio for a few days now so it has a little bit of fray happening i will suggest that when you cut it that you don't let it sit for too long or don't play with it too much like you actually do want to just sew it pretty quickly okay so i'm going to pin this a bunch you want to make sure, because it likes to move too, uh, we like to have fabric that, you know, is shifty. So you want to make sure that you are um, sewing it carefully. I'm going to take a slightly larger seam allowance with this. Also make sure that your pins are sharp and that they do not have snags on it, because what will happen is when you stab this through, it'll snag your fabric and then you'll get like kind of a run in it, which you don't want to get. So. Um, these pins would not, like, truthfully, I wouldn't recommend these pins necessarily for it. They're what I have. If you have these guys, these are, ah, 
think these are a clover pin too. They're a little bit thinner and I like them. Um, if you're familiar with the magic pins, they work really well for this too. And the magic pins are really um, very thin. So I like them a lot. I just don't have them up here. Okay, so I'm going to use my just regular ones. I'm not going to use my extra fat ones. So these clover pins that I love so much for the quilts, I'm not going to use this for this because they're too big and it'll stab a hole in it. Um, bigger than I'd like it to. Okay. So we're going to work our way around. Because this is a tiny seam allowance, just a quarter of an inch, I'm going to try to um, try to make sure that it's really nice and even. Okay. Just going to work our way around. And I do pin it a bunch because it likes to slip. So as much as it's, you know, not a cuddle, it still is a slippery, slippery little fabric. Okay, so the other thing that we want to do is we want to make sure that we leave a gap so we can turn this thing through. So I'm just going to use my little Sharpie. I'm going to make a mark here. And I'm going to make a mark here. It's about three and a half inches maybe. Yeah, three and a half inches. Okay. So we'll see how that works. And um, we'll put a, um, a little gap there so we can turn it. So I'm pin up here. And then what I like to do for my gaps so that I remember, because sometimes in the middle of sewing I get really excited to just keep going. And so I'm going to put two pins in there so that I remember that's my stopping point. So I'm going to do this, do this, and go all the way around. All right. I am going to switch out my needle. So we're going to do that really fast. If I can get it out of there right one. No. Nope. Of course there's two needles in there and I got the one I didn't want. Come on little guy. All right, so I'm going to switch it out. Oh no, that's wait. Oh no, that is. Okay. Yeah, so this is a universal 70 7010 universal. So this is what I normally use when I am working with the embrace double gauze. And that's what I'm going to use for the silky satin. And the reason I'm switching it out is because this needle is a smaller needle. So it's going to not pierce the fabric quite as much. I gotta cut that. Oh, come on. Okay, so it won't leave a big hole. A 90 will leave a big hole in it. We don't want that to happen. Shot. And someday I'm really going to get that thing fixed. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The auto threader that wasn't. <laughs> exactly. Okay. So that's maybe why I switched. Maybe for Christmas. Yeah, maybe for Christmas. Um, so this, that's why I switched the needle out. So a lot, most of the time when I'm sewing cotton, you'll notice that I just sew with the, the regular 9014 stretch needle. I just continue to sew with it. But because this is a finer fabric, I want to make sure that I am... Uh, not pierce any extra holes in it. Okay, so I'm going to back stitch just a little and I'm actually going to shrink my stitch back down again. I'm going to switch it to a 2.5. Okay, because I want that to be nice and nice and strong seam here. Okay, I'm going to do my little so what'd you just L do brackets there? so that I can make a stronger turn under there and make it easier when I'm hand sewing it later. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to start in here, do a little stitching to the edge, and coming back. Okay, so I always do these on my gaps, my turning gaps, and it makes it a lot easier when you're going to turn it inside out. Okay, so I'm just going to sew right along here. And I'm just trying to get just the tiniest bit past the quarter inch. And the reason I do that is because I want this to be a little bit smaller in the toe so it'll fit inside the other one a little better. Sometimes I found that um, you can get kind of too much bulk at the toe. So I'm gonna try to avoid that. Okay, I'm just gonna stitch all the way around. And I can see it's starting to pinch there, so I'm just going to open it, flatten it out, hope for the best. 
Uh, this is the lining, so if it doesn't work out perfectly, it's fine. Um, you can also use a cotton for this lining if you wanted to. So if you had a really cute like holiday print that coordinated, you could absolutely do that too. The silky satin just makes for a really kind of luxurious little lining in there. Okay. All right. Ta-da. There we go. Yay. All right. So we've got the, the inside, the outside, the cuff. Let's do, um, let's sew the cuff and then we can sort of just do assembly. All right. So now I've got this piece and I'm going to sew this in half or fold this in half and then sew it. So I'm going to try to push the nap out of the way just the, a bit so I can see the edge. Okay. I don't need it to stay out of the way, but I can sort of pinch it and feel it and I kind of push it out of the way just a little bit and see it. So I can kind of, kind of see in there. But this nap is really, really thick and it's very straight up and down. So it doesn't tend to want to push in as much as some of the other ones. And then it will look a little bit funny. So I just kind of push it out of the way just for a second and then let it kind of snap back. Okay. All right. So there, oops, we'll get that pin to come out. So now I've got this pinned together and I'm going to sew this with a quarter inch seam allowance. All right. And I'm doing this all with the white and you'll see it doesn't really show. So it lets you see it, which is great. Oops. Oh, I didn't switch my needle. I should probably do that. I should probably, I, I do. I need to do that. Is what it is. <laughs> it's like it didn't sew at all. That's great. Okay. So I don't have to pick anything out. <laughs> I'm going to switch that needle back around. What did I do with the one I took out? It should be. Right over it here. Should be. <laughs> here we go. I'm like I put it somewhere. Okay. Oh, look at that! I did it first try without putting my reading glasses on. Yeah. <clears throat> it's like a game every time. Can she do it? All right. So now I'm gonna stick it back in here. Do a little lock stitch. And then I'm going to sew. And I did bump my stitch length up to a three again. Okay. Seal is very thick, but also smashes a lot. So it sews pretty well with a, a smaller seam allowance. It doesn't really need a huge one. Some of the other, it really depends on the fabric. If you've sewn with it very much, you know, like they all, they all vary. Okay. So now I've got my cuff. There's my, my seam. And I can kind of come back in here with my stiletto. Love that up. And we'll just hide the seam a lot. Okay, makes it look very neat and tidy. Okay, so now I've got my piece here. There's a couple of things that you can do. And I'm going to do one of them on one side just so you can see. Because this is the way I do them on mine is that I go in here and I cut out the batting out of the seam allowance. Okay, this is tedious, so we're only going to do it on one side. But what it does is it makes your seam allowance a little smaller. The other thing you could do is you could go, um, you could probably, well, I was going to say you could zigzag it because sometimes I'll do that to smash things, but we're going to have to clip these curves, so you could just leave it, probably. <laughs> I always, we'll see what happens because I'm only going to do this on the one side here and we'll see what happens with it if I leave the batting in the seam allowance. I may find out that I've been taking the batting out of the seam allowance the whole time and I didn't need to, which would be pretty funny. Uh, <laughs> okay, so we're going to clip curves because this is going to turn inside out and it's going to need it to make it sit right. Okay, so on the, is that a con concave? Bit? That's a concave curve. Then we need to clip it so that it will open up like this. Okay, mm -hmm. and then when it's on a concave, curve, then we're going to clip the V's into it. Okay. And those two words are totally interchangeable depending on how you want to look at it. Okay. I'm like, I, <laughs> Just point. <laughs> yeah. The outside curve, the inside curve, the outside curve, we're going to cut V's into it. The inside curve, we're just going to cut little, little snips into it. So the only thing you want to make sure that you're doing when you do this is not clip your seam allowance. If you do just go back over and sew it, but make sure that if you cut it, you fix that because otherwise you will be in trouble. Okay. This 
So we're just going to do that here, and then we'll do it on the other curves too. Um, I did find I tried to be lazy and not cut it, and it wouldn't lay right. So there's a little bit of a curve here too, and I've just clipped that. These clips are so easy to do that it's no big deal. And then we'll do the same thing on this heel. <coughs> okay, it's a teeny tiny little seam allowance in there. Pinking shears? Uh, I wouldn't use pinking shears for this because the pinking shears are not the easiest to cut. Like, they're not super sharp. Um, they are sharp, but they're weird. Like, it's harder to cut thick things with the pinking shears. I think there'd be more of a chance of the stuff moving around and you accidentally cutting the seam. Probably. And I, yeah, I find it not as easy to cut with. So, uh, maybe for the satin ones if you wanted to do it. The satin ones I don't clip at all because it's going to go inside. If it's not perfectly round, it's fine. Yeah, it is what it is. So, all right. So how did you layer the fabrics together and in what order, right sides, inside, out? So there was some confusion. So my fabrics are right sides together. This is your sandwich. <clears throat> yep. Batting, batting. Okay. So we're not even to the confusing layering part. Just wait, guys. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to stick my fingers in here. Push that. I feel like there's a little. I might have snipped it. Just, yep. See that? I don't know if you guys can see the threads poking out there. Oh. Okay. So that's where I snipped it just a little. So I'm just going to turn this inside out. I'm going to go fix that. So this is how you find out you did it. Looks like right there. Yeah, right there. I clipped the thread. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're going to go back and fix it, just like I told you you would do. Because sometimes it happens, as careful as you're being, it'll happen. So carefully doing that and checking it will make a big difference in not having to try to hand stitch that baby later. You really Sounds like fun. Are you checking it twice? I'm checking it twice, exactly. <clears throat> going to find out who, you know, followed the rules or not. Teresa's not really the one to follow the rules, so <laughs> let's see if that worked. Okay, we'll turn this inside out. And then, so you can see I like gently kind of push along it to see what's happening. Um, and that's why, because then I can go and fix these things as I go, and not later, because nobody wants to do it later. Okay, turn it all the way inside out. And it has this little part over here that has like the little curve of the, like the calf area kind of comes out like that. I definitely have gotten this pushed in like this a couple of times and not seen because it kind of looks right like that. Okay, so make sure that you're pushing it out all the way so it does that little curve. Okay. All right, so there's the outside of our stocking. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to sew the cuff on. So the cuff we're only doing one layer because I didn't want to, I didn't want to seam at the bottom and I think it looks just fine like this. So I'm going to put this over and find my seam and I'm going to get my seam to match up with my, the back side of it. Okay. The calf side. Okay. I'm going to get these to line up and then I'm going to pin them together again. Okay. The other thing I'm going to do first before I pin too far is I'm going to find the other like half point over here, put a little pin there, and I'm going to put that on my other seam. Okay, that way I know that it's basically between the two, so it should spread out evenly. If you end up with this sort of thing happening where like it doesn't look like it's matching, you're just going to make it match, and I promise it will work. Okay. Cuddle is sort of magical like this. Okay, I need to wrap some pins. Nice. Thanks. <laughs> my, my magnetic pin cushion is not right here, so it's just having to get the push. Okay. So I'm going to work my way around this, get it in there nice and evenly. The batting, I've noticed, tends to be, like, a little weird. And um, I haven't had an issue with it yet. I've done a couple of them now with the batting in it. I just sort of squish it in there and it's fine. Okay, so on this one, we're going to sew this in the round. Okay, so we're going to sew this around the free arm of your machine. 
I, the free arm on this guy, the baby lock crescendo that I'm sewing on is bigger than most of them. So I went and checked it on the Bernina and it's quite a bit looser. So when I'm sewing with this today, if you have a baby lock crescendo or a baby lock, um, one of the larger machines, you'll know that, you know, it's a little bit of a tight fit. Uh, on any of the other machines, I think you'll be, you'll be a lot happier with the free arm working around it smoothly. Okay, so the free arm is uh, part of your machine. I'll show you that in a second. If you're not super familiar with it. Okay, all right. So I've got it pinned all the way around. All right, mm -hmm. so I could sew it. <clears throat> and maybe I'll do it this way this time and show you the free arm the next, the next round. So <coughs> this one, I'm going to stick it in here and I'm gonna stick it underneath. So this is where it gets a little bit funky because we're gonna sew around this circle. Okay, so I'll show you how I do that. So if you have a machine that is in a flat table, like I have a vintage machine that's in a table, this is the way you would have to do it because there is no free arm to do it with. So uh, if you have a free arm, you can use that. I'm gonna switch this over to a big zigzag, so it's my big 5.5 five that I like so much. And I'm just gonna switch it here because I'm kind of just basting this on. All right, so I'm just gonna um, kind of get it tacked on that way. You'll notice that the pins like to sink in here and then they are almost completely invisible. So make sure that you are not sewing over your pins. Okay, and we're just gonna kind of bust our way around this thing. Make sure I've got my pins showing so I can take them out in time. And then one of the things that happens is it gets caught up underneath that digital dual feed. So make sure as you're working along that you um, keep it flat and keep it moving. Okay, I'm gonna try to open up my seam allowance. So you saw I opened that up a little bit. And the reason I did that is to get it to um, be a little flatter. All right, I'm just gonna try to work my edges together. I'm sewing in a little bit. And when I do this seam allowance along the top, I just do a larger seam allowance because that quarter inch is crazy with all these layers. I don't wanna do it. The other thing about doing the zigzag along here is it does sort of squish down the nap a little bit and holds it all flatter. Okay, so you can see those pins just, I could see that there's a pin there because I could see metal, but I could not see the pin head anywhere. So make sure when you're sewing this, you're not sewing over your pins. It's like a little surprise every time there is one. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing. Open my seam allowance, there's a pin in there. Right. Oh, I could have sworn I felt one, but now I don't feel it, so maybe I popped it out. Or, you know, maybe we'll get a broken... Nope, there's... I think I just sewed a, a pin in, guys. <laughs> Not even kidding. So, we'll have to go back and see if I could find it. Either that, it was just really thick. I heard the machine, machine could chunk chunk. Yeah, it was like not super happy right there, which sort of sounded like sewing over a pinhead. Um, so, we'll see. Okay, so we got all the way around. I could have sworn I felt it, and then I couldn't feel it anymore. Yeah, there it is. Oh, no, maybe not. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, there's something there. Goodness, like it's so weird because honestly, like you have to hit it in just the right spot to feel it, but I can feel it there. It is stabbing me, stabbing me. Oh. Okay, so now. <laughs> now where's the other end? <laughs> Here it is. Oh, wow. See, sewed right through it. That's See, this is how these things happen, you guys. Exciting. I know, and I, you, you saw, like I felt it. I was like, I'm sure it's in there, but now I can't find it. Ta-da. Look it. Now we have one with little special holes in it. <laughs> wow. Look at how it barely missed the metal. Oh, gee. Look at that. It just went right down beside it. Let's see if I can flip it over. There you go. That was close. Wow. Yeah. Okay. That was exciting. <laughs> All right. And I'm not going to stitch back over that because I don't need to. This was just kind of a basting stitch to hold this down. Okay. So now we've got this zigzagged all the way around. I'm going to find my cute little ribbon. <laughs> Somebody says you should play the lotto today. Yeah. <laughs> Indeed. Let's do it. Okay. So now I'm going to put my little ribbon in here. Okay. And again, this is a six inch ribbon, which I found to be pretty darn good size for that. Okay. I'm going to go back and I'm going to stitch over that, not the pin again. And I just want to hold this in place. Okay, and I could just sew this in place when I do my lining, but the reason I'm gonna do it outside of that 
and do it here is because I want it to be held extra tight. And I know that if I try to pin this in with the lining, I'm much more likely to have that ribbon get twisted or weird. And now it's just in there and it's secure. So then when I do the stitch all the way around, it just holds it in one more time. All right, so there we go. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of roll this up and I'm gonna shove this into the lining. Okay, so this is right sides together. So let's look at this this way, okay? My feet are going the same direction. This is very important, is that your feet go the same direction, all right? If you don't, it won't turn inside out right because your foot will be going that way inside, which means it won't go anywhere, okay? So make sure these are the same. Then I just sort of fold this up and stick this in. Okay, now you remember we made a little gap here and that's how we're gonna turn this thing, all right? So I'm just gonna put this whole thing in just like this, all right? Make sure that your little tag, your loop is stuck inside, okay? That's an important, important step because otherwise your tag will, your, um, your hanging thing, it's gotta be, what do you call that? Your ribbon, I don't know. There's gotta be a hanger word for it. Um, it's gonna be on the inside of your piece and not working. So on here, I'm gonna come over here to my lining side and I'm gonna make sure that that matches, the seam is matching with the inside piece, okay? So that my seam, seams are in the same spot. Stick a pin in here. Okay, and I'm gonna put a bunch of pins in here because this is gonna to want to move on me and it's got so many layers. This is super slick. Okay, like you could see that just wants to go everywhere. So if I don't really pin it a lot, it's gonna to wanna to move on me and my seam allowance is gonna get real funky. I wanna just get this as straight as possible. And like I said, I'm gonna up my seam allowance to a half inch because it doesn't matter on the top at all how much, if it gets a little bit shorter. So it ends up being a quarter inch shorter than it was originally intended, no biggie, okay. So I'm just gonna pin these all together. So pin a bunch. If I could get that pin up, it would be helpful. There we go. Okay. I'm just gonna pin a ton as I go around here. And it's, you know, it's gonna cause me to sew a little bit slower. That's not always a bad thing. There's our special lucky pin, Hawk. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I was actually watching for it to see if it was going to come back up. And we're going to have to see how long we can Somebody keep that one in Somebody earlier suggested okay. it needed to be framed. I'm like, well, <laughs> we'd probably have to frame a bunch. <laughs> we'd have to frame a bunch. It's the <clears> first <throat> one that I've sewn on the Sew Together Tuesday, though. It's true. That's, that's good. And we've been doing it for, you know, a long time now. Years, right? Oh, no, wait. <laughs> it just feels like it. Millennia. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is the free arm. So you guys saw I just pulled this off. Okay, this guy just comes off. And then you have a free arm. This is what works really well for sewing sleeves and all that sort of stuff. It also works well for this. This free arm is larger on this machine than on most other machines. All right, so this is a little bit of a tight fit on here. I can get it on. If it's too tight of a fit, if you can't rotate this, and I did find with one of them, with the Sherpa, because the Sherpa is um, thicker and didn't squish down quite as much, it was a little, I really had to like kind of work it around it in places. Um, so make sure that you're, and I may have to do that with this one too. Um, make sure that you're, you actually have some movement, otherwise you're gonna be in trouble. Okay, but like I said, it is it is bigger than other free arms. On my my Bernina is quite a bit smaller than this one. Okay, so now I'm just going to stitch all the way around. I'm going to put it back on a straight stitch, up that to a three. Okay, and we'll see how this works. I'm not going to back stitch because I'm just going to come back around here and go right over the top of it. Okay, get my stiletto, and I'm going to open my seam allowance here. Okay, not critical, but nice to do. And I'm just gonna kind of work it around. So if I kind of keep a, a hand here on the front, it keeps a little bit of movement here, and then I keep a hand on the back and I can kind of work it, work it around a little bit. Okay, so like I was saying, on the first one, I thought I would just leave a hole up at the top and turn it, and that was a bad idea. So, um, 
and I should have known that. So sewing all the way around this will be pretty easy. Like I said, bigger seam allowance so I can catch, make sure I cover up that zigzag and all that stuff. Will also be something I can go back and check from the inside. And if I didn't catch, cover it, I'll just go back and do it again. Okay, here I come back around. I'm just gonna aim for that line right there. Make those match up. And then I'll do a little back stitch there to catch them um, and lock those stitches together. Okay. And pull it off. So, so super, it's super easy. Basically a half an inch seam allowance up yeah, it's there a, at the top. Yeah, it was about a half an inch seam allowance. Got it. Okay, so you can see it's quite a bit bigger than this seam allowance. This was the quarter inch and this was basically a half an inch. Okay, yep. might, be, might be closer to three eighths. We'll see. So then I can look around this top part and see if I ended up catching. So you can see it like wobbles. Okay, but it looks like I've caught all of my zigzag in there. So great. That's what I wanted. I wanted to make sure that nothing was hanging out. Now I'm going to pull everything out through the hole in the lining. So this is, um, this is the part where this can get pretty uh, ragged, I guess. So I tried a couple of different things when I was just trying, trying stuff to see how it would work. One of them was I tried to do a zigzag stitch on that so that I could keep it from fraying. That just tore apart the fabric. I tried to search it. That also just tore apart the fabric. Um, and then I did a little bit of fray check and that worked, but then I realized it was probably more than I needed to do. So that's where I'm at now. And I realized like it's fine and this will just pop right in. So where those stitches are where I did that corner, I can just pop this in and it will turn that seam allowance right in. All right, and now I can hand stitch that with some red thread, which I'm not sure I have right now, but we're just gonna turn this this way. Okay, stick this all the way. <clears throat> Push it all the way in. We're just gonna kind of manipulate the cuff to make it so that the lining all sits inside. And there we go, look at that. We have a cute little stocking. And if you don't sew up that hole in the side, you have a secret pocket. Um. <laughs> I was just thinking that. That was like, that's for the bonus prize. Yeah, right, that's where you stick the money. And they're like, you didn't find the money? I put it in there. I'm like, <laughs> <I'll sew. laughs> All right. Stitches, there we go. Okay, I think it turned out pretty cute. You guys like it? It's okay. Um, I need, I need another. Oh, there's one right behind you, Hawk. There's another hook thing. It's over there. Yeah. yeah. See it? Got it. I have another got one. It. I have four. Here comes. Okay. So now we got one more. We'll hang it here. There we go. There they all are. Okay. So this one has batting. Then it has the pellon. Then it had the SF 101 and then bat, um, batting again. Yeah, so the batting is the one I like the best. I wish you could, I wish you could squish it with me. Um, but it would, they're super cute, look at them, they're so good. Okay, make sure that this all comes out evenly. Did I? Here's that little part that I was saying likes to squish in. All right, and then the only part you have a little seam that it shows is there. Super easy, all right? So, pretty darn fast. Look at that, we did it in an hour. I was like, I'm not sure how long it'll take, but an hour, start to finish. And really it's like part of it is that whole, like cutting it with the dye and be getting everything like whoop, done so quickly is kind of amazing. Um, are there any other questions that I missed? Cause I just started, you know, sewing, blah, blah, blah. Do you just use batting uh, on this one or interfacing? I only used batting on this, okay? So that's the one I like the best is only the batting. I tried it with different ways just to see how it would work. Um, did you? Trying to get all the questions answered. Mm -hmm. Make sure. Hold on. Okay. The main fabrics were right side together. Okay. Do you? Okay. I think we got it all. All right. And then we got a winner too. So just a reminder: it's Giving Tuesday. Give to some cause or another if you can. Um, we all need a little help every once in a while. I think it's a nice thing to do. Um, and also the uh, special special thanks to the so-and-so in Glendora, California. She really helped me out this last week and I appreciate her very much. The folks at AccuQuilt who also provided all of the dyes and the machine. So thank you to them. They are really, um, the dyes are really, really great for working with Cuddle. So I appreciate them sharing 
their um, products with us and so I can share them with you because they're wonderful and they work really well. So like I said, you can use this, this technique, you can use it with all sorts of different patterns. The dies just work really quick and easy. The winner for today, I don't know how you pronounce the name, Chenoa, Chen, Chenwa, Chen, I don't know. Spell it. C-H-E-N-O-A. You know who you are. Your name gets mispronounced all the time, I'm sure. <laughs> like it's one of those names that's not familiar to me. That's the winner. So thank you very much for participating. Thank you for sharing the video. Thank you for coming again. I am really pleased to be doing this and to be here every week with you guys. So thanks for sharing these little um, fun projects with me. We'll be back next week. We're not exactly sure what's happening. Things are changing. Hawk won't be here. We know that. So um, we'll figure out what's going to happen next week and I will. We'll see you on Tuesday one way or another. All right. So go make some stockings. Have a good one. And happy December. And happy sewing. Bye.